Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Open Network User Group Podcast. My name is Mark Tierney. I am the Working Group CTO at ONUG. I'm psyched to be involved in the relaunch of this show. Today, we're going to hit recent news in ONUG and share what's going on in the community. Joining me today are the co-founders of ONUG, two guys that are, they're pretty special to me. They're smart, witty, good-looking, dare I say. Gentlemen, Nick Lippis and Ernest Lefner, welcome to the show, guys. How you doing? I'm Nick? excellent. Thanks, Mark. I'm, I'm great. Good to be with you. Ernest, you're with us? Thanks, Mark. In the chair. I feel like it's been forever. Yeah. So normally, Ernest is where at least we're going to try to get Ernest in studio with us. Uh, he's, uh, he's comfortable. He's comfortable in the big studio. You can yeah. make it happen, right? Uh, Nick, let's start with you, buddy. There's, uh, the, the show's been on the shelf for a bit, and uh, we're, we've sort of unpackaged, relaunching. Uh, let's start with what is Ona? Uh, for those who have not uh, been exposed to Ona, uh, give us a... The quick, uh, if you don't mind, just one or two minute. What's Onug all about? Yeah, well, first of all, I have to say I love the opening uh, because the opening says a lot about what Onug is. It's a uh, it's a user group, it's a user community um, um, that has uh, both kind of a buy side and also a supply side uh, that's involved. And really, at the at the crux of what Onug is about is that we aggregate requirements um, for the large enterprise and we work with the vendor community uh, and the CSPs uh, to deliver solutions that are unique to the large enterprise, really medium to large size enterprise. And I think that's really it. So um, uh, it's for IT executives, it's a way to kind of amplify their requirements. Uh, so it's not just one company asking, you know, the vendor community for something, they get to kind of amplify that across many, many other large corporations like uh, the ONU board represents about $1.6 trillion of market cap. So it has significant like influence. And then for the vendor community, it's a way in which they um, can tap into what's required, what's coming down next and how they may want to modify products and services uh, in order to make sure that they're addressing kind of a large, you know, enterprise market. Ernest, so, uh, we, you know, I've, I've been involved I'm cutting you off. So Ernest, I've been involved uh, and watched this thing, grow over the uh, over the years but tell tell us a little bit tell the audience a little bit about you know the the beginnings of this thing how did how did you and nick get uh, connected and and uh, just you know pull the curtain back a little bit on how this yes. thing started yeah thanks mark it's a great story right um you know we i was presenting at ons 2012 and you know i i was really kind of jiving with this whole software defined networking software defined infrastructure component and I pulled the founders of that event to the side and I said, listen, you know, vendors kind of rule the rules roost here, right? They're the ones that are controlling the agenda, right? That is going to come to its obvious conclusion, right? Um, you know, vendors work together great on new tech, but eventually when they try to differentiate themselves, it becomes a standards war, right? And so I said, you know, we, we just need to stop thinking about things from that standpoint. Let's get together and, uh, let's get a user group going. Let's get the people together. Let's define the best paths for technology like Nick was talking about, right? Let's share our experiences in a way so that it's not as hard for every single you know company in person to, to take advantage of this technology, right? Let's shortcut it by sharing our experience. So, and I said, you know, you know, let's focus on the users and get a user group going. And they said, yeah, no, that's a terrible idea. We're not, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and, uh, and Nick was standing there and I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I've had some good ideas in my day and I thought this was a winner and I was kind of bummed out and Nick came up to me, uh, cause he was there for the conversation. He just happened to be standing there when I came up and he goes, listen, he goes, I've got some experience with these things. He goes, I, I think you're absolutely right. He goes, if you'd be willing to, you know, work with us, maybe you know, I was with Fidelity investments at the time, Fidelity's willing to sponsor the first event, you know, we can make this happen. And I got, you know, I got sort of confused. I was like, I thought Nick was a part of the ONS team. And it turns out that, of course, Nick was a freelancer. He had his own gig going. And this was an opportunity for us to come together and talk about what we wanted to get out of it. And, of course, Mark, and after the great snowstorm in the spring of 13, you know, in Boston, we kicked off the first ONA. And, you know, it's great that there are folks that we see and hear every time we come to ONA that have been since the very first one. Right. Yeah, and I'm one, um, and I'm one of those people. So I uh, had the yeah. advantage, of, uh, you know, of being a on the consumer side of this thing from the beginning, and uh, I loved it. Now I'm a bit biased now because I'm, I'm, you know, materially involved in Onug on the inside. Uh, but what I always liked about Onug was the uh, this is very 
consumer driven as opposed to user groups that are, you know, facilitated, if you will, by, a, you know, supplier side. Nick, help, help us understand, help the community understand, you know, how do you keep that in balance? Like, how do you, uh, and I, I'm putting you guys on the spot on a lot of this stuff. So, and by the way, you're oh, doing great. great. Uh, but, uh, how do you keep that in balance, Nick? The, 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 you know, I, enterprise IT consumer and the, and the supplier, it feels like a good marriage right now. How does, how did you envision that? And is it where you want it to be right now? Well, you know, I've been involved with so many other um, kind of programs where you, where the audience gets spammed um, by the vendor community. And it's not a knock on the vendor community there. You know, they're there to sell a solution. Um, so I knew that we had to like really kind of change the model where it was IT execs that were doing more of the, most of the talking. Um, so, and that's really how we approached it. Um, and even there were, in the very first ONUGs, it was like kind of crazy. Mark, you probably remember this. I'm Ernest, I know you remember it. Um, is that we actually didn't allow the vendor community to come into the conference part of the of the meeting. So we would actually have a door that we would close, you know, um, that would, you know, prevent the vendor community from coming in. And the reason why we did that was because the mitigation departments and mark and communication departments. Um, on the consumer side, uh, we're always difficult around sharing and speaking in public. So we needed to, and also too, is that uh, IT execs didn't want to like be talking with um, or being that open when vendors are in the room too, because um, whatever they say can be construed in certain ways or could message, hey, I want to buy something. And then all of a sudden, boom, uh, they're being attacked. So uh, anyway, so at first we kind of did that separation um, and then we uh, realized this really has to be more of a collaboration uh, than a separation. So uh, the way that we um, we handcraft every ONU, right? There's a lot of time and energy that's put into that. And all the ideas really come from um, ONU board members, uh, which are exclusively IT executives. And so we find that um, we don't talk necessarily about um, technology du jour, uh, we talk about, you know, technologies that are important to the community and things that they want to promote. Um, but really, there's, it's more about the entire life cycle. It's about operationalizing. It's about skill sets. It's about culture. Um, and lately, it has been a lot about kind of which technologies to integrate to help companies uh, scale as they kind of go down their enterprise cloud room. So anyway, to answer your question, uh, you know, Mark, is that uh, really the owner board has a huge, huge impact, you know, um, on how we craft the messaging, how we do the, uh, the sessions, um, and then also um, how speaking uh, opportunities are, are, are permitted or uh, offered. And, and Mark, just to two cents to add on to that, right? We were very, very, very deliberate about how we approach that, right? We spent hours talking about the right approach, right? We wanted to bring, we wanted to give people an opportunity to come together and share experiences in a way that allowed them to feel comfortable, yet aggregate those experiences in a transparent way so the vendor community could action them, right? And we wanted, and we, Nick and I talk about this all the time, right? While the focus is on the users, we want the vendors to have a good experience too. And we're constantly talking about whether they're getting what they should out of ONUG and how do we help them get what they need and making sure that we aggregate requirements and, and put out documentation that lets them take action for their user base, right? And that if one of our user group members, you know, wants to buy a piece of technology, they come to the table with the ONUG data, right? And that puts whichever vendors, you know, participate in a much better strategic position to be responsive, right? And so we've built this new relationship that I think has been working. I mean, I think it's been working very well. And I think, you know, attendance from the vendors and attendance from the community um, really speaks volumes. And then the win, the big win of it all is, you know, they're only allowed to bring examples of success with their users right they can't come pitch right they've got to they've got to have a user come talk about it talk about the win and then whoever else likes that whoever else finds that you know amenable to their use case they can walk right out or you'll know, go to the digital room and talk right to the vendor and, and learn more and that's a powerful combo so i'm still a bit new in from being on the inside so it's a unique position for me as a working group CTO. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, working groups there in a moment. But what I'm struck with is how interested and willing both sides of this equation are 
about sharing and everyone's got a voice. Part of my responsibility is making sure that everyone's got a voice. If you're, if you're involved in a, in a, in a working group. Uh, so whether you're with a, you know, a large supplier firm, small supplier firm, large enterprise consumer, or small enterprise consumer, it doesn't matter, right? Everyone gets to have a voice on the, uh, on the working group teams and it works like, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like it's a lot of fun to see people, uh, put their heads together, brainstorming and, uh, developing new concepts. And in some cases, new standards. So, uh, we're going to move on. We're on the clock. So I want to Nick kind of throw it to you a little bit about, you know, what's worrying, what's bothering it execs, this, you know, these days, uh, and, uh, how it's driven us into one of our most significant, uh, issues. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what's bothering some of our tech, uh, tech execs in the security space? Oh, in the security space uh, in particular. Yeah, you know, it's like, um, well, we've been spending an awful lot of time, you know, on you know, on multi-cloud. And, and Onug, really, if you think about, um, so uh, a preamble to like talking about this um, one, one concept, Mark, this collaboration that we've been able to create uh, between kind of buyer and supplier side, at this Onug coming up in spring, the DNA of Onug uh, in the, the vendor, um, proof of concepts and in their booths is going to be so evident. Um, it, you know, one thing uh, that I've gotten really just jazzed about with Onig is the influence, that, the positive influence that we've had as a community where our DNA, that and these are the things, the requirements that come from the working group are now materialized into products. Like obviously we, we, we created the SD-WAN market, so there's a $5 billion market. But now when you see... Um, um, Azure and Amazon um, and Google um, now starting to implement um, software approaches to that. That's ONU DNA uh, that's, that's in those solutions. And it cuts all across, you know, uh, the whole multi-cloud uh, ecosystem. So, um, you know, Outpost, ONU DNA on it. Uh, Anthios, you know, ONU DNA, you know, on it. So um, I think the community has a lot to be proud of uh, around its influence. So anyway, so going to like the security uh, side of it, um, one of the biggest things that we've been dealing with is um, is, is this wall of worry uh, that uh, that you had first alluded to, and the wall of worry really says this: is that uh, cloud consumption tends to be linear, right? So it's like you know you start, you know, uh, you have various different groups; they they consume various different cloud services, start VP uh, VPCs so forth and so on. What they don't realize though, and no one really realized this until, you know, really as of late, is that the information, the reporting that you get from the cloud providers, the security alerts and alarms uh, and so forth um, is exponential. So while you might be a linear consumer, you're getting bombarded uh, with data. And so what that has done is that it has driven a lot of the SecOps teams to be marred in toil. Um, They're constantly getting all these messages from all the different cloud providers. Now they have dedicated staff to try to understand those messages. They try to map those messages to various different standards like NIST and like uh, MITRE. Um, they also then try to enrich the log information and the events that come in so they can provide context to that. They've expanded their security infrastructure to levels that no one had ever anticipated. So I'm, what I mean by that is that their investments in SIM and their investments in SOAR, so security orchestration um, and automated response, uh, and then also their security data lakes. Um, that stuff, that investment is going, growing. I'm not sure if it's exponential, but it's definitely geometric. If I could, um, if I could jump in and just, uh, I think that one of the best examples of everything you're talking about was outlined in this Wall Street journal article where uh, tech chiefs press cloud suppliers for consistency on data security as an example, right? And s tell us a little bit about the, the, the ONUG members that, you know, we're telling that story if, if you don't mind. No, I don't, I don't mind. Um, what we've, you know, so in this particular story, that was um, the founding members. So Daniel Conroy from uh, from Raytheon and Gene Sun from FedEx and James Beeson uh, from Cigna, uh, they were talking about um, you know this issue 
of bombardment of data and they're not having any kind of consistency across the cloud providers. And that makes them, um, drives their cost, both in terms of SecOps personnel required and also in terms of technology uh, investment uh, to absorb that and process uh, all those messages. And, um, and Gene, uh, Gene Sun has a really great quote in that article as well. It's like, he's basically saying this is just totally unsustainable. Um, and it's unsustainable, not just from a cost point of view, but also just from a visibility and a posture point of view is that as you know, those, as messaging increases exponentially across multiple clouds, then your visibility becomes cloudy <laughs> and gappy. Right. And so once you start having gaps in visibility, then your minimal minimum viable security posture then becomes um, unable to predict. And that makes everyone feel really uncomfortable. And that's the wall of worry. So uh, let me let me uh, I, I love what you said uh, and what Gene said. Let me read it, if you don't mind. My own stakeholders, regulators, the board, auditors, we need transparency. Uh, FedEx has a team dedicated to translating information from cloud providers. This day-to-day -day pain is unsustainable, right? I mean, that, that nails it. And uh, Ernest, I, I've got to assume in, in your uh, other roles that you know, you're seeing and hearing customers vent sort of the same thing. Is that fair? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Mark, when you know, people get all excited about cloud, right? And let's say you're a small fintech. It's not a big deal, right? You're rolling out workloads in Amazon day one, right? And you're constructing your whole, you know, operational response plan around the fact that you're with a cloud service provider. But you get a, a mid to large size enterprise, right? And they have got, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of servers. And they have an operational process that runs a very specific way today. And they come out of this controlled experimentation and they're kind of at a loss. Like, okay, well, how do I start integrating all of these things into what I do today? And it starts to create these bespoke groups, right? And then God forbid, they think, well, what if I need multi-cloud, right? What if I need a second cloud service provider? How do I scale, right? And, and Nick really put it out well, when you talk about the cloud growth being linear, right? But the labor growth to support that is exponential. This is exactly the kind of problem we need to solve, right? And, and the thing that and, strikes me about it, Ernest and, and Nick also is, it's not just that it's unsustainable. It adds zero value that, to so their that, business process. Zero. So you, that's exactly where I was going next. All right, I'm right? sorry, buddy. It, no, no, because you're right on the money. And this is something that we'll be talking, I think, a lot more in future ONUGs, right? Is that, you know, enterprises expect their technology to provide inherent business value, platforms that help their businesses grow, right? And at first, cloud was like that because it provided agility, right? But now that we're sort of getting into cloud, right? And you start thinking about cloud 2.0, for lack of a better term, you know, these cloud service providers have to find a way to, to build business value and deliver business value, you know, above and beyond what they bring today. And I think participation in, you know, the cloud security notica notification framework is that, that great first step. And it's can provide them a template, right? Uh, when you start thinking about regulatory requirements, you know, you know, problems beyond security or on data, data retention, data at rest, right? Just managing your devices and having control of config, right? These are the kinds of things that they're gonna need to start figuring out how to provide adv advanced business value around. And, you know, clearly ONUG is here to help lead the way there. All right, so that's that's the perfect segue, go figure. That's the perfect segue into talking about what we're doing. And so Nick, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, the what is likely the biggest initiative going on at ONUG right now, the cloud security notification framework. Uh, you mind giving a, giving a little brief on what that is all about? Uh, yeah. And I'll help. I'm I'm always taken back by how brilliant uh, Ernest is. You know, it's like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't feed the animals. That's all I can tell My you. My head's like, not like, going to be able to fit on the screen right. soon. You see, uh, you see how big his chair is to begin with. Like it, uh, <laughs> we don't want to have to burst that capacity. So, uh, all right. Um, yeah. So, uh, CN, um, um, uh, CSNF. So, cloud security notification framework. Um, uh, what CSNF um, is trying to do is to try to um, move that wall of worry uh, far, far, far to the right, right? So that you don't hit it. And, um, and it does that by providing a common set of definitions, a common syntax uh, across cloud providers. Um, and so that 
uh, you get a message, uh, a notification, okay, um, a, port, uh, a port 80 is open to the internet, which it shouldn't have been before. Uh, that gets communicated to you the same from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, uh, IBM, Oracle, and so forth. So they, they're not, um, they're a little different. So can you have consistency? Um, so consistent language uh, and also consistent syntax. And if you could do that, then you can ingest that a lot easier. You don't have to do a lot of pre-processing or have dedicated tools for every one particular um, uh, um, cloud provider. Uh, and then also you can um, streamline uh, some of the operational SecOps uh, folks. Um, what we're, the way that we're approaching this is through the concept called a decorator, which is an object-oriented programming uh, kind of technique where you can take a message uh, and then you decorate it, all right? Uh, you dress it up and you dress it up with attributes so that all those attributes um, then are standard attributes um, and that um, that provides the democratization of these messages across the cloud providers. And then you can do lots of different things in that decorator. You can do mapping into various different standards organizations. You can um, embellish um, or you can enhance particular messages to add context. And in essence, it gives you the way in which to eliminate a lot of the toil uh, of SecOps so that the SIMs could operate uh, much better. The uh, secure, the SOARs can um, actually be able to respond to specific events or specific resources that are of high priority. Um, and your security data lake, you can ingest that data a lot easier um, all across the different cloud providers. You can eliminate the 90% of the time that the folks are spending, high paid folks like spending that doing a lot of that mapping themselves and have them really focusing on posture assessment. So CSNF does two things, just two. It provides a translation service. So translation between cloud providers. And the second thing is it provides enrichment. Um, and that enrichment is unique to the consumer so that the consumer can identify more quickly identify um, that an issue that's occurring in a resource in a cloud provider is important to them. It's a payroll, it's, um, it's a um, you know, PCI server, it's not a web, um, public web facing um, server. So you can um, prioritize your response. So those are the two things. Yeah, Nick, just, you know, just so people don't, uh, you know, it's, it's just two things, but those two things are super important, right? And will become the foundation for how you can deliver business value through that, you know, that medium, right? What if, what if the enrichment ties it to a business service and resilience capabilities, right? Now, all of a sudden, you're pulling your security plan and your resiliency plan together. Those are important things that provide value. Now you're able to equate events to maybe failed customer interactions, right? And impacts to business service. And that's direct business value, right? And those are things that we struggle with today, but then you take those people who they were just looking at plain alerts tomorrow, you know, today and then tomorrow, now they're building business value. And that, I think that's gonna be the big differentiator, right? And that, and that really will, you know, sort of put the cloud service providers on notice that just building this stuff in a vacuum and throwing alerts out the door, you know, isn't going to cut it, right? That consumption and the way it's consumed really I, matters. I'm glad you said it that way too, Ernest. You know, yeah. Putting the cloud service providers on notice that, again, one of the things that struck me, and I mentioned it earlier, is the cloud service providers that are materially involved in this initiative right now, they get it. Like the light sort of went yeah. on. Like they understand that it's doing it the the way that it's being done today doesn't add value and so they're in they're materially uh, involved in in enhancing and fixing this and working with the ona community to deliver something that i think is going to be amazing and it starts with alerting but the truth is is uh, you know in the white paper and uh, nick correct me if i'm wrong but i mean we've identified several domains uh, within this construct that uh, that can be addressed in the future, uh, including things like compliance and governance in, uh, in a similar fashion. Is that fair, Nick, or did I uh, go off the rails there? No, no, you're absolutely right. You know, it's like we don't want to like boil the ocean because like just doing security is big enough, you know, just to get like um, using getting the decorator built and, and having commonality around there. But you're right, absolutely right, Mark. Those uh, attributes for the decorator can span multiple different domains. Uh, observability and visibility, uh, resiliency is like, you know, Ernest, you know, just uh, just said, 
Um, and all these things tying them into like, you know, uh, business value creation. I think that's a welcome thing from the, from the cloud providers. Uh, but it's hard though for the cloud providers because what we've also discovered and found out is that um, they have no mechanisms for working with each other. Mm. They don't know how to do that. Um, and so, um, and we didn't know that going into it. So like a big part of this now is, and they're big, large organizations. And so, um, all right, now they're all, figuring out, okay, we have to talk to our engineering people first, make sure we have our resources aligned. Um, and then, okay, now they know what they're gonna be doing. And so now once they, each one has that kind of process done, then, okay, well then how do we share information? How do we collaborate? There's there's a lot to get done there, um, but we're, we're making progress, which is great, knock on wood. But, um, but absolutely right, Mark. Um, it, the decorator uh, concept is a great concept because it's, um, it has a lot of versatility uh, and it can expand across multiple different domains. Uh, it all has to do with uh, wh what kind of information is being reported. So right now we're just focusing on security, uh, but it can expand to like lots of other areas. Okay. so you're going to hear more and more about CSNF, both from ONUG, and you're going to start seeing some of this information dribble into the community because it's starting, it's starting to take hold. I mean, that notionally it is, uh, it's, it's gaining momentum. So you know, for those of you who are watching, listening to the ONUG podcast, you're going to start hearing more and more about this. There's ways to get involved. Uh, I said, I mean, the way I feel about it is, uh, every unique voice is, a you know, uh, one, you know, one more possibility of getting some really important insights and viewpoints on where we take this thing. So, I mean, Nick, do you have a, a you know, an invitation to people who might want to get more involved uh, in the, what we call the collaborative, uh, any, uh, you know, insight suggestions on how to go about that? Yeah, well, I think first, you know, if you haven't been to an ONUG, we invite you, uh, you know, come on uh, to an ONUG, it, um, they're virtual, they're free, um, you know, now in this kind of digital age. And so we welcome um, each and every person, you know, get involved, see what it's all about. Because um, we'll have presentations from all the working groups, there'll be readouts, so you can see which, um, what all the different working groups are working on, you'll get to, um, you know, hear a lot about CSNF uh, from both the cloud providers and also from the consumers. Um, uh, at this ONUG. So I think that's the, kind of the first step. And then um, if, um, if you have time and you want to contribute, um, and like I said, every voice is important. Um, if you want to amplify your requirements um, so they get heard and, and put into the, the process, um, then join a working group. Um, there's, you just go to the onug.net web, um, website and just go into the collaborative Choose which working group you want to get involved in and, and join. It's All right, I'm going to give my two thanks, uh, Nick. I'm going to give my two cents, and Ernest, I'm going to throw it to you. Uh, I agree with everything Nick just said. Uh, uh, here's my bias. I'm going to be selfish. Uh, look into those things. I'm I'm uh, I'm in, I'm running the I'm running herd over these these working groups: AI ops, orchestration automation, security. Um, uh, elastic infrastructure and the CSNF team. There's so much cool stuff going on. So I'm inviting you to, to get involved. Ernest, any uh, final uh, parting shots? Um, well, you know, do we want to talk just a little bit about some of the other themes that are going to be coming up in the next few weeks with ONUG? If you have time. Yeah, I got a few minutes. So I think one of the other themes that ties closely in there, Nick, that, that I think is really important is, hey, we're coming out of a real tough event, right? The last year has really been in response to covid and a lot of organizations had to make some very, very tough decisions very, very quickly uh, in order to handle that. And we're, what we're finding, what I'm finding with my clients, et cetera, is that 2021 and beyond is really kind of going into a planning year, right? Um, they're reevaluating those decisions. They're taking a look at how they fit in with things like what we've been talking about and trying to determine what that next five years looks like. And what we're trying to do is help them interpret that, right? And help provide them the information they need to uh, to really plan out the next five years right understand what the next value for cloud is going to be how to drive security what you know was the decision they made to grow their vpn footprint or potentially their you know their access gateways for hvd right was that the right choice and 
you know, where's zero trust? Like these are the kinds of, uh, you know, big topics that we're going to be tackling in the upcoming owners. And you can start to see a theme where a lot of these things are going to be coming together, right? Um, Cloud edge services is another one that's really going to get a little bit of airtime. You know, this owner, we want, we want to hear from people. Is it real, right? Is cloud edge services something that you need to be thinking about in the next five years, or is it just for FedEx, right? Cause they're leading the way there. And, you know, we want to have those kinds of discussions and we want to make sure that the users have an opportunity to ask these folks tough questions about what they should be doing and where they think the market's going. Because ultimately they're betting the next five years of their business on. That's perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, listen, future episodes, you can expect to hear more about what's going on in the working groups, what's going on specifically CSNF, but all the working groups, you'll hear more about it here. You're going to hear from ONUG members. You're going to hear uh, both suppliers and consumers, right? Uh, we want your feedback. So let us know uh, if there's uh, something that we're not addressing on the show. Reach out to me, uh, reach out to me directly at mark at onug.net. Uh, we've invited you to watch the show. We've invited you to get involved, and we're inviting you to Onug Spring, May 5th and 6th. It's a, a digital event. Uh, and what are the numbers, Nick? Uh, the, the, the fall event was ridiculous, right? It was uh, huge. Yeah, there were like 3,200 people in fall. Um, we're on track for between four and 5,000 for the spring. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's going to be a big owning. I know, really, you know. Um, but I want to amplify one thing that um, that um, my brilliant co-founder just uh, just talked about um, with uh, with this owner. I'm sorry, Mark. I know we got to go too. But the one concept is this. And uh, this, I give this full credit to Ern, uh, to Ernest. Uh, time me to uh, Ernest. It's we've been thinking about. Okay, well, you know, what is the new business platform? And uh, and so a lot of us, and me included, was saying, okay, well, cloud is a new business platform. And um, Ernest really pushed back hard on that. It's like really, it's not. You know, that's just another technology. Really, the business platform to deliver digital value is the IT organization. And you're so right, you know, and the more that we thought about that, we started talking about this around November, December uh, last year. And the more we thought about that and the more that we have to celebrate that. So that's going to be a big celebration at this own It's really that IT organization to really elevate it, to deliver digital value and to be responsible for their outcomes, which is a major shift uh, from uh, things in the past. One of the things that COVID gave us. Yeah. And Nick, like CNSF is a perfect example of enabler, right? It unlocks the potential of the organization, right? And we want more of that. Yeah. All right. That's a great way to that's wrap fun. it up. Yeah, no, it's perfect. Thanks for uh, thanks for wrapping it up in a bow. Again, you can reach out to me, Mark at onug.net. Uh, go to onug.net to look into all of the material we have available, but also to sign up for the spring event, uh, May 5th and 6th. And on behalf of Nick, Ernest, and myself, we will see you next week on the ONUG podcast. Thanks, everybody.